Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the Fish Locker out on the shore. Me and my best boy are out today, aren't we? We have got some really big spring tides. A little bit of mixed weather, the sun's trying to come out. But what we're going to go and do today? We're going to be looking for scallops. We're going to be doing some foraging on a shoreline, looking for ideally scallops, but pretty much anything we can find. We're going to be following the tide down. We're about two hours before low water, so we're going to follow it right down to the low tide line and hopefully find some scallops. It's best doing this after certain conditions. We've had a lot of rough weather and it's just calmed off. And rough weather in a certain direction generally picks up the scallops from the deeper water and deposits them close to the shore. When this coincides with a large spring tide, the tide goes out a lot further. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we will be able to find something. Yeah. You've got your net and your bucket. Yeah. With a positive attitude. <laughs> Let's go. Looking around on this bit of shoreline, we are finding Plenty of nice sized cockles and clams. Yep. Oh yeah, look, are you gonna tell me what we've got here? What are these ones, these blue ones? These are blue mussels. Blue mussels, those are quite small, so we'll leave them be. Yeah. And what are these shells here? These are limpet shells. Cockle shells. Oh, cockle shells. Cockle shells, clams, there are some limpets. But yeah, all we're doing is we're just scouring around as we're walking about, we're covering. Now yeah, look. There's another full clam. We're just walking about, scouring around. All the rough weather as it moves sand around dislodges these out of the ground, so you don't need to dig them up. I don't personally like digging for clams because it disturbs the seabed too much when you can walk around picking them up like this. It's also a good idea to have a walk around on the high tide line because any of the shells that are present up here on the high tide line that are dead will be present down there alive. So like we're looking around, there's a cockle there. There's another one there. Hmm. Yeah, well done. There, you know what this is, don't you James? Rock oyster. That is a Pacific rock oyster. Now these, these are actually invasive to the UK. There's another one. Well, there's one there, look, and there's another one there, and another one there. These are actually an invasive Pacific, this is, these are invasive Pacific rock oysters, these are an invasive species. Now, it's a moral dilemma about taking these. You are legally allowed to take as many as you want because they're invasive, but we don't really like eating them. So I'll leave them for other people to collect, because I know there are quite a few people around here that collect these. We have two species in this area, these invasive Pacific rock oysters and a European flat oyster. If I find any of those, I'll show you those as well. Oh, bucket blown away. Yeah. Oh, there's another cockle. There's lots of these rock oysters around here, isn't there? Yeah, and a lot of cockles. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is a big one. There's stacks of these rock oysters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, loads of them. All of these. Oh, what does this mean here? Look, you see, like all this sand's been pushed out. Mm -hmm. Means that there's going to be something living under this fish rock. Oh, there's a big cockle there. Yep. There will be a fish or a crab under the back. Right, it's buried in sand. I'm not going to dig him out. Going to? Well, I'm not going to dig him out by hand because all this ground's really sharp. Yeah, I'm really cutting my hands on shells. You see this here? Look. That's a sponge. It's called a breadcrumb sponge. So you don't like breadcrumbs? <laughs> they do a bit, yeah. And there's a bit there, look. And here's a bit here attached to this rock. Oh yeah, there's another one there. You'll find, as we start getting out towards the low tide line, because it is a really big spring tide and it goes out a lot further than usual, we will find a lot more things, because they aren't usually uncovered. There's some, some sea life, like crabs and these clams and some starfish and bits and pieces and limpets, that don't mind living up high on the tide line. They don't mind being uncovered for a few hours a day when the tide goes out. But other species, like scallops and that, they prefer to be in the water, so you'll only find them down at the low tide line. 
I aren't expecting for us to find them until the tide goes right out and we're right down on the tide line. But the fact that we're seeing all these sponges is a really good sign. Oh yeah, just a little bit too small. Yeah. Good spot though. There's loads of sponges around here, just try not to step on them. Well, that's a good sign. Scallop shell. Yep, that's what we're looking for, that's a good sign. Looks like we're in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. These are one of my favourite shells to find as a kid. That is called an auger shell. Queen Stuck on the back of this sponge, there is actually four Queen scallops. Four little queenie scallops. Also called a variegated scallop. Now those ones don't get much bigger than that. They are quite nice to eat, but you have to eat like 40 of them because the meat that comes out is about as big as your thumbnail. Oh, I've got my hopes up then. One, two, three, four. <laughs> now these are, James has got one there, look. This is off a king scallop, and this is one of the very, in fact actually that's quite a large variegated scallop. We will, we'll take this one, take this one and eat this one. Yeah, that's the type that we're after really, but that is a really good size one. That is called a king cockle. You can see it compared to that one, can't you? So that's a really pretty one. No. Don't take what you don't need. What you can see here is you see this little area of reef and you see how these little waves are coming and buffeting it. We're going to be looking along the edges of here because that's what happens underneath the water. The scallops get pushed and pushed and then they hit a seam of rock. So as the tide goes down, we'll be looking along the edges of here. And also, looking inside the rock pools, because mm -hmm. we might find a lobster or something, or a crab hiding in one of these. Oh, can you see that hiding in there, look? Yeah. That is a dahlia anemone. Called Urtikina felina. That's its name. Oh, some tube sponges, and there is a sea squirt. There's some really big barnacles on these rocks, aren't there? Be careful, yeah. you don't don't scratch yourself because they're sharp. Yeah, I've had that happen. Yeah, me too. Oh. Whoa, sweet lobster. No, dahlia. There's another dahlia and enemy in there. Yeah, a tiny one. Keep looking in all the cracks, right? Right, keep looking in all these little seams like this look. Because if anything gets washed in, that's where it's going to be. Uh, uh. Yeah. Oh, go on then, go on Grace. Good spot. It's taken Is so it full? Long. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh it nearly got my finger. <gasps> Is it gonna do it again? It's full. Yeah. And I see a mm. What you should do, look. Oh. If you find them <laughs> if you find a scallop on the shore, 
if you find a skull up on the shore like this and it opens what you need to do is give it a bit of a tap on top and see if it closes tight if it stays open it's dead you don't know how long it's been dead for this one you can see it snapping you can see it kind of going so we know this one's fully alive and what's on top of it look it's um limpets slipper limpets well done and right. weed. that is a lovely skull well done james i just noticed it well, exactly like what we're talking about didn't it? it's just it's got washed in here Oh, I can see one as well. Oh, no, oh. Right next to that, Dahlia's anemone, and this variegated scallopate. Oh, actually, there's a, there's a sea cucumber. Look, you see it? Oh. Get move the camera out for that. Oh, Dad, I can smell as well. There's your scallop. You can see it's still alive. Oh. There's your Dahlia anemone. There is quite a large variegated scallop. And there, hiding in the corner, was a little sea cucumber. All we were doing was just looking around in these little cracks, weren't we? Yeah. There is a Montague's crab. Oh, it's got some weed on it. Yeah. Oh, there's another one under there. I wonder if these two are battling. See them both. These here are actually the same species of snail. That white one. Yeah. And this one here. Called a painted top shell, but that one's like an albino one. Yeah. yeah. Good find with your scallop. Hey Dad. Well done. You also know something. What's that? I can see some fishing line in here. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything attached to it. Gonna follow it. Be careful though, because there might be a hook on the end. Oh, there's a float. Oh, someone's been trying to use pop-ups. Look. Yeah. I don't know what they've been fishing for, but they've been using big hooks. Yeah, we'll we'll wrap all this up. This is this <laughs> this stinks. I'm going to cut the bait off, and I'm going to check everything else with me. I do feel responsible. The, the guy who's lost this didn't lose it on purpose, but I feel responsible as an angler. If I ever find anything like this on the shore, I'll wrap it all up and I'll take it with me and I'll chuck the line in the bin. So that's a win-win. We'll clear up some plastic out of the, out of the ocean and I'll get a little bit of terminal tackle. You see this look? It's called a sea squirt because it's, it squirts out. Lots of these painted top shells around, isn't there? There's one. There, look. See, it jammed in here next to this rock. Yeah. And this one. Oh. Do you know what that is on its back? No. Those there are whelk eggs. Oh. That is that's a flipping massive scallop. Put your hand out. Look. <laughs> <laughs> that is an absolute monster. Yeah, those there are whelk eggs. Oh, this one's opened up again.
fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Shaping up to be a good day, despite the rain showers. Look at that! Do you know what's done all that? Worms. Worms have burrowed into this, this piece of driftwood. That piece of wood there could have been floating around on the ocean for God, for 20, 30 years. And worms, that could have come from the other side of the world, that piece of wood. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, what have I got here? More Another piece. <laughs> you nearly fell then, didn't you? Oh, got excited then, but just a shell. This is what happens, James. This is what happens when you rush. Now we'll use this as a teaching moment. What have I told you about slippy rocks? Be careful. Be careful. Right. Fortunately, you just landed on your bum and you've got no sense in there, have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this what we have here is actually a nudie brand. It's a sea slug. It's called, I think it's called like a shaggy sheep sea slug. It's got a couple of names, it's called a grey, a grey slug or I like, I prefer shaggy sheep. Because it's got like a shaggy top to it, hasn't it? Yeah. Down in these crevices here you can see a lot more of these variegated scallops, these queenie scallops. Yeah, little queenies, can't you? Yep. And you know what these are, don't you? Sea squirts. Sea squirts. Yeah. Trying to provide a little bit of shelter for my best boy. It's getting rained on, aren't we? Yeah. There are some more well eggs, like what we had on that scallop. And those are some eggs of a sea slug. And a little tiny cowrie. I do like cowries. What, what have you found? Is? A dogfish. A dogfish egg. Yeah, it's a little dogfish egg. Oop. That's an old one though, isn't it? Because he's empty. Yeah. He's grown out of there. Good spot, James. Yeah, James has just pointed out there's loads of anemones on this this eel grass, isn't there? Yeah. They're everywhere. Rock. Raining quite heavy though. Right, James, when we're walking around, what did I tell you you had to do with your feet? Feel you just around. had to feel around on the ground with your feet. Because we can't see an awful lot because the water's all stirred up. Yeah. And I just put my foot down here and I, what did I say? I went up oh, somewhat flat and hard, didn't I? Yeah. Ta -da. This one actually has got a hijacker on it. It's got a piece of sugar kelp on its back. So we've got one. We've got what we needed. Yep. Yeah. Perfect size we've as well. Perfect amount now, haven't we, Dad? Right, James. What did you do then? I was feeling around my foot. Then I put it down. Then I felt. You just went. Oh, 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 found some. And when I put my hand down, I was like. Huh? Yeah, what's this? And then when I put my hand down and I followed it to the bottom of a foot. Scallop. Well done, James. That was pretty and cool. we've been finding quite a lot of whelks. Yeah, it's pretty full of them. Yeah, look. That's just a sea snail that lives on the seabed. And that there, that little shield, is called an upper column. And they pull that down on top of themselves. Yeah, look. I just put them out because it's raining and I didn't want to keep the camera out. So, well done. Let's here. keep looking. It is getting it is getting quite cold. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I found someone. Is it that whelk that I've just put down? 
And you're just feeling around on your feet to see if there's anything flat and hard, aren't we? Under this foot. Cockle shell. Yeah. Too small. See that James? Little tiny one. The sun has come back out. Yay! It keeps absolutely lashing it down. Me and James have been hiding behind a rock for like the past 10 minutes while it's been, been tipping it down. We have had a cracking hot. We've, we've really outdone ourselves today. James found some absolute brahmas. Yeah, some beauties there. Look at the size of that. Put your hand out. The size of them. <laughs> They're absolute monsters. Now, we started collecting these clams clams and cockles because we didn't know if we were going to find any scallops because we've found plenty of scallops we're going to actually we're going to take all these and let all them go we did get we've got 13 scallops now i was just explaining to james there about how 13 is an unlucky number so we're going to take one we're going to take the smallest one and put it back this one here is still big enough to keep still a really good size mm -hmm. but we're going to let this one go and just keep them Day. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, we'll also, do you want to keep these or let these go as well? Well, we could keep them. Tell you what, we'll keep one. No, because then that'll be 13, we'll keep two. <laughs> right, we'll let them go and we'll keep them. Anyway, while the sun's still out, we're going to make our way back up to the van. We'll have a walk along the low tide line. Well, it's no longer the low tide line because the tide's coming in. We'll have a walk along the tide line. Bye. See if we can't find anything else. And then get you changed, because you're get you went off your wellies, didn't you? You're, you're getting a bit cold. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. You got your little clam carrier net. Yep. Shoot your cockles back. Fatties down there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I think I should have gone. You warming them feet up? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Toasty little torties. Yeah. Well, it's a nicer day today than it was yesterday. Yeah, definitely. It was tipping it down yesterday, wasn't it, and blowing a girl? Yeah. Yeah. James and I had a fantastic day yesterday, scavenging for scallops. Now, we, we found loads. Now, too many for me and James just to eat by ourselves. So we've split them in half. We've brought half of them out. James and I are going to cook them on a fire. And the other half, we are going to eat for tea with Hannah at home. Yep. Uh, I've been teaching James about different types of fires. This type of fire is good for building a bed of coals. I'm going to build, build a bed of coals, and I'm going to shook these scallops off. And we're going to cook, cook the scallops on the coals. <laughs> James is going to help me chop a little bit more wood. Carefully though, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, carefully. And also, as we've been walking down here, the tide's ebbing off. It is absolutely glorious. You've just found a dogfish egg, didn't you? Yeah. On the high tide line. So what did you do with it? I immediately grabbed it and walked it over to the nearest... The nearest deepest, rock pool. Yeah, the deepest. So it keeps it wet and then we're going to walk it down to the low tide line at low tide. Yeah. Yeah, good man. Right, we've got lots to do. Yeah. We'll get the fire going. When it starts building down into a bed of coals, I'll spread it out and we'll cook the scallops. And we'll come back to you. Inside these scallops, there is a disc of muscle, an abductor, abductor muscle. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my knife along the inside of this and separate that muscle like that. Now, this is the frill there. 
the orange part is the coral and this is the muscle we're going to keep that black part there is its stomach now you can see that these are spawned out because it's very depleted it's almost see-through can you just step back please james so that people can see right there look yeah so all i'm going to do is i'm going to lift everything off and leave that white disc attached hopefully just like that <laughs> it's typical wind was blowing that way before now I've come down here winds blowing this way so it fires on me right just do the rest now Dad, you pass me the lids. there you go you want to stack them all in a nice nice place In a second. Okay. That one has actually got a really bright row. Yeah. I'll leave this one in. I'll leave that row in that one. They are quite nice to eat when they're full. When they're depleted, they, they just don't taste of anything. Just a little bit of frill off. Right. There you go. That fire is dying down nicely. Now, you see there, it's made loads of coals. I'm going to flatten them out in just a second. But first off, I've shook the scallops and I managed to save three of the rows. You can see these are really vivid orange. Now, actually, the scallops are hermaphroditic. Orange part is male and white part is female, or white part is male, orange part is female. I can't remember. But anyway, one's one and one's the other. And if a scallop has got more orange, that means that it's that sex. And if it's got more white than orange, it's that sex. Wow. Oh, big old bumblebee. Yeah, we're going to stick a bit of butter into these. I'm going to have a dab of garlic in mine and a dab of hot sauce. You, do, you just want butter, don't you? Yeah. Okay, you'll keep me right. I'll, I'll get all these sorted and then I'll, I'll talk to you just before I put them on the fire. There we go. A little bit of garlic, butter and hot sauce. And those are James's three. They are wonderful colours, aren't they? And there's the fire all flattened down with a bit of coals. <laughs> now I'm laughing at myself here because I've, I've made a mistake. <laughs> I've, left my, I've left my gloves at home. Yeah, that fire is red or I'm going to end up with burnt fingers here, I can tell. Just spread them around the fire. I'll keep James's three separate so they don't get mixed up. Flip, that's hot. And the last one. And I'll put these two little queenies near the edge so we can get at them. Now what's the beauty of this? The beauty of this is those scallop shells with their shape have created a little bowl that these are going to cook in. And there look, all that happens is the butter melts and cooks. Now they'll let me know when they're ready to be turned because at the moment they're stuck to the shell. I'm going to get a little stick and you just, just tease them, just touch them and as soon as they come detached from the shell they're ready to be turned over. They're not going to, in that heat that, they're not going to take more than two minutes max. They're already sizzling. You want to come here and get your bread ready? Yeah, you see how this one here has come detached and it's ready to be turned over. Still stuck, not ready. Still stuck, not ready. Okay, right. Well, 
Be careful because these are Boiling. scalding hot. <laughs> yeah, those shells are just like a little skillet. Put your bread down there so you don't. You want to grab hold of them, James? Grab yourself some bread and get yourself a. Right. There's your scalloping stick. It's done as well. I think I'll prep them for you. Let's oh, get a bit of bread. <laughs> On the fire it's not all the same heat all the way through the coals. So you just have to work out which ones are cooking quickest and kind of circulate them around. But this means that they're not all done at exactly the same time. So we're able to have a feed and then put the shells away and have another one, another one, another one. Right, you see that one sizzling down there, be careful with that. Don't pick that one, don't pick that shell up. You want to dip your butter? That's my favourite bit as well. Whoa. Yeah. That, that butter juice in there. I think this is my favourite way to eat scallops. Oh, Dad, look. Yeah, Slip Olympics come off the back, haven't it? Yeah. <laughs> you would never believe that today wasn't the middle of summer. Now the rows, they haven't got an awful lot of texture to them. They are quite soft and mushy, almost like a mousse. So I actually like them when they're overdone, because it gives them a little bit more texture, it gives them a little bit of chew. That is the meat that you get out of a queenie scallop. It shows you the difference in the other ones. The other ones that were coming out and they were like that, weren't they? That's how much you get out of the queenie. Do you want this one? Just a bit of the frill look. Because with the big ones, I took the frill off before I cooked them. With that one, because they were so small, I couldn't. I'll go look see. The rose got a bit of texture to it, and the scallop is perfectly cooked. Hot sauce has made me nose run. Pardon you. <laughs> 
Jim. It's all right. No, no Jim, Jim, it's all right. Don't like bees. Bees are all right. They never do. If you just stay completely still, look, see. Bees, bees don't want to mess with you. They'll just if they if they come up to you, they're just trying to figure out who you are. It's gone, Jim. Jim. <laughs> They're just, trying, they're just trying to figure out who you are. Now, wasps and hornets, mm -hmm. yeah, you can get rid of them, you can kill them, but don't kill bees. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of bees. Yeah, bees are fine. They do a lot of good for the flowers. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of good for the wildlife. Mm -hmm. I decided to put the last couple of scraps of wood on the fire, and we're going to have some dessert. Marshmallows. Now, <laughs> this was a teaching moment to James as well. There's a number of times he put his hand close to the fire to toast them and toasted his fingers. So all you do is you just have two, two stones like this. Put it under one and lay it on the other, like that. And then all you need to do is just turn it when it's ready, look. And no toasted fingers. Yeah. Good trick, eh? Yeah. Good man. We'll finish enjoying some of these and then take the shells down to the water. Seconds. You're having seconds of dessert already. Yep. <laughs> there we go. See if you can get any to float. Oh, there's one. I hope you enjoyed joining us. Hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.